Wastelanders was a major content overhaul to Fallout 76, featuring human NPCs. Wastelanders begins on October 23, 2103. By this point, both humans and ghoul survivors have returned to Appalachia upon hearing rumors of a treasure, as well as news that Appalachia has become safer with the efforts of the Vault Dwellers. Two women, Izella Mejia and Lacey Drummond, are located outside Vault 76 and are disappointed they are having difficulties locating a rumored treasure. Afterward, the player is directed to the Wayward Bar where they encounter a woman, Duchess, being held at gunpoint by Batter, demanding she tell him where Crane is. The player helps Duchess against the local gang known as the Free Radicals, either by killing the gang, offering them valuables or joining them. Finding a cure to the pandemic after a series of events, the Vault Dweller reunites with their overseer at her house, who has returned due to her curiosity of the new people arriving in Appalachia, even despite her disgust at the portion of her Vault Dwellers who use the nukes like playthings. She may be informed that Evan has been laid to rest, causing her to become sad but appreciative, albeit with the guilty conscience that she abandoned him. The Scorched Plague is relevant in this storyline, as well as efforts in order to widely spread a vaccine against it. Both the Vault Dweller and their overseer head to the Kanawa Nuka-Cola plant to prepare the vaccine. The Vault Dweller meets two new groups that have settled in Appalachia, the Raiders at Crater led by a woman named Meg Groberg, and the friendlier settlers at Foundation led by a man named Paige. The Vault Dweller can learn more about the people within each faction and the struggles they face. After the people have agreed to take the inoculation, the Overseer convinces the Vault Dweller to see the value of revitalizing the economy with a gold-based currency, hoping it will bring humanity together in the end. The Vault Dweller and the Overseer learn about Vault 79, the site of the rumored treasure, and discover the Vault may hold the country's gold reserves. However, the Vault Dweller must eventually choose which of the two factions to raid the Vault with. Regardless of the faction, a socially isolated ghoul, Penelope Hornwright or Lucky Lou, will, after an abduction, help break into the vault and try to find a home in the faction where they can be accepted in spite of their biology. Settler's storyline The Vault Dweller decides to side with Paige and Foundation for the raid. In order to break into Vault 79, Paige requires a massive drill to bypass Robco's defense grid entirely by drilling straight into the vault itself. The problem is that Foundation does not have this kind of heavy construction equipment, since the caravan had to travel light. In order to find a solution, the Vault Dwellers are asked to seek out the remains of Hornwright Industrial and find a way to provide the settlers with the means for carrying out the heist. The Vault Dweller encounters Penelope Hornwright in the remains of her old family estate. She has been followed by a giant drilling robot known as the Motherlode which is under her command. Skeptical, Penny agrees to the idea of the heist. With the problem of breaching Vault 79 resolved, Paige moves on to the next problem on the list defeating the laser grids protecting the gold. Schematics indicate the laser grid is a high-powered, military-grade system that will send the facility into lockdown if the most minute fluctuations in power occur. Paige will forward the residents to Jen, one of the youngest members of the Foundation community and the daughter of two Chinese spies who fell in love and quit their loyalty to the Chinese government. Jen has come forward and volunteered to solve the problem of penetrating the laser grid in Vault 79. She posits the idea of a Chinese stealth suit and begins tracking one, but it is discovered on Machu, her mother who was previously thought dead. The player takes the suit, either by killing Machu or encouraging Machu to join Foundation. The next problem to tackle in terms of storming Vault 79 is the so-called Grim Reaper's Hallway, a hallway chock full of military-grade laser turrets designed to eliminate any attacker who manages to get through passive defenses. Page suggests reaching out to a group of ex-military operators that has been shadowing the settlers since their presence in the pit, and sends the vault dwellers to the agreed meeting spot, so that they can enlist their aid in the heist. They meet Oliver Fields, Thompson and Fred Radcliffe. Radcliffe agrees to go with the vault dweller to Robco Research Center where they create a robo-brain who can bypass turrets. With everything ready to begin the raid on Vault 79, the Foundation team gathers at Freddy Fear's House of Scares for last-minute preparations. Unfortunately, Penny becomes abducted by Hijack. The raiders from the crater demand that the Vault Dweller come to Hornwright HQ alone to talk terms of her release. After rescuing Penny, the raid begins and ends up being successful, though the player may choose to betray Paige by taking more gold than agreed to for themselves.
Additionally, during the vault raid, a group of secret service agents is met as well. They have been trapped in the vault. Depending on the vault dweller's interactions with Jen, however, she may retain positive relations with them, or she may run away from Foundation to return to the Capital Wasteland. In the latter case, Jen's goodbye holotape is either addressed to Foundation, or she may address it to the vault dweller who she calls an asshole. Raider's storyline In order to prepare for breaching the vault, Meg needs an expert on heists. The problem is, Lou, her ghoulified expert, is nowhere to be found at Crater and the vault dwellers will need to find him first and convince him second. With the help of Weasel, he is found in a cave with various contraptions trying to kill himself, due to a fear of him becoming feral and hurting his lived ones. After being convinced he should live, he returns to Crater. Gale, a female super mutant who acts as Meg's muscle, is recommended for the task. However, Gale has lost Ra-Ra, a young girl who is her adoptive daughter of sorts. The vault dweller rescues Ra-Ra in an abandoned dam. Johnny Weston, another recommended member for the heist, is dealing with his own problem. He will only agree on one condition, saving his old partner, Hal Gleason, from slavers at the Watoga Civic Center Arena. Since slaves are often forced to fight in the arena, Johnny passes the vault dweller off as his property, allowing them to participate in the competition. Johnny rigs the competition to allow the player to get close to Hal. After rescuing Hal, Johnny kills him anyway in anger because Hal previously betrayed Johnny. Meg asks the vault dweller to check on Lou's progress with the vault job. However, Lou is found tied up with a Yao Guai next to him. After the vault dweller kills the Yao Guai has been killed, Lou explains that Lev and other members of the gang sabotaged the heist by stealing his remote detonator and leaving him for dead. After Lev's betrayal is reported, Meg suspects that someone is acting as a mole for Lev, and she wants the vault dweller to find out who, and deal with them as they see fit. After an interrogation, it is revealed that Barb is the mole. Lev's location is revealed and he is killed by the vault dweller, along with Caleb Fisher and Sturgis. After dealing with Lev's rebellion, the heist can now begin. The gang blasts their way into the vault. While in the gold room, Johnny gets greedy and attempts to betray the vault dweller, threatening to kill them so he can have more of the gold for himself. Johnny is either talked out of it or killed in return. After, the raid is successful, although the vault dweller may betray Meg and take more of the gold for themselves.